Hello, every oh, I'm out of frame. But let me go into place. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. It's Saturday. It's time for a stream. I got home from doing errands, and I was like, "Well, it's 2:05. Normally, I start streaming at 2. That just wasn't gonna happen. So here I'm at 2:30, uh, streaming. Oh, lower my volume in my ears. This, the music is bopping right now. In fact, I might lower the game audio because it looks like it's loud. For some reason, there's a very heart pulsing, pounding audio soundtrack to the scene. Uh, <laughs> and that makes me a little bit nervous. Let me just lower the music. Why don't I weather volume? I'm gonna lower everything other than voiceover. And that should be a little bit better. Hello. Hello, everybody. We're back to play more Disco Elysium. Here's what happened last time. Found my wrecked car with my badge in it, driven it into the ice because I was too drunk. Uh, and then I met up with some other drunks. They dubbed me Tequila Sunrise. Uh, so that was pretty good. Um, and then I just kind of continued wandering. I met a lady with a sword. That was cool. Uh, I walked out onto the ice. Uh, and met these people in a tent and I was like, well, we're gonna stop here, but now we're here ready to talk to these people in the tent The I was having an issue earlier So let me know if this comes through in the sound where Although the sound is supposed to be coming in through my headphones I can also hear it on the desktop for reasons that are unclear to me. Why? Um, maybe I'm monitoring something. I shouldn't be monitoring No, I don't know what's happening there Oh wait, maybe I found it. Okay, anyway, listen. If you get if you get if there's too much audio bleed, let me know and I'll do something about that. I don't know what that something's gonna be though. Oh thank you for the subscribe, MB Gray. Uh I appreciate it. Thank you for coming and hanging out. It sounds fine, okay, good. Thank goodness. Um so Yeah, I think that's all the updates about what happened last time that y'all should need. Uh, I'm out. I'm out in the the larger part of the village, so hopefully we'll be able to uncover more mysteries. And I'm drinking tea. That's where we're at today. All right, let's click on some of these little baubles. I don't see Kim in here. I think Kim decided to not join me, which I respect. Pile of nasal sprays. Ah, nose of Fat Ultra. I think that's what I used to. Increase my morale. Yeah, literally banging like some some pulsing beats on the music right now. It makes me very concerned about <laughs> about what's gonna happen here. A speaker, the big kind they use for live music. Oh, maybe they're listening to some banging music, and that's why we're hearing it. This youngster is named Egghead. A young man with peroxide blonde hair holds up a Harmon Woosh. Woosh. <laughs> wow, she tape player nodding along with the music. He looks at you with a knowing smile and says Hardcore. Okay, he just says hardcore. Let me increase the volume for y'all. Is it? It's hardcore. Hmm. I don't know what to say to that. Skip a D, skip a danger. I am the rearranger. <laughs> okay, actually pretty into this dude. Skip a D, skip a danger, y'all. Oh, new task, solve the egghead puzzle. <laughs> what do you call, <laughs> the red Sam in the chat says, what do you call a werewolf YouTuber? A like and subscribe. <laughs> this is a good, terrible joke. Thank you, uh, <laughs> Star Cow one. Thank you for the, the re-up on your subscribe. It is hardcore. That's what I'm learning about egghead. Could there be a right way out of this garden of forking paths, you think? <laughs> so my quest is just to figure out this dude's deal? There has to be some way to talk to this person, you just haven't figured it out yet. What if you just try again and find your way out of the maze of things to say? Alright. This is hardcore. Say hardcore. nothing. Still say nothing. Hardcore to the mega! Say nothing. Internally coherent. What? <laughs> Still, still say nothing. All core, all right, yeah. Say nothing. He furrows his brow, 
as his very large head traces the sublime, invisible movement of the music in the very real air of the stuffy Hardcore. tent. Ah. He lets out an agonizing, ro agonized roar of the feverish, obviously not too hardcore beat below. So hardcore! <laughs> he stops dead in his track, tilting his head to the side. It is! What is it? I mean, really. He tilts his head to the other side, like an owl. I was singing that too! I am the mic enforcer. I am the chick's checker. Yeah! Yeah. Did I do it? <laughs> Back to the heavyweight jam! Says the young man with the tape player and the large uh, Bois d'Aero boots. The long shaped tree sprouts on his silver belt buckle. Hardcore! Oh, this again. Hardcore! Hardcore to the mega! Internally coherent! All core! All right! Yeah! Please tell me, what exactly are you Gotta doing? Gotta get the people going! Why? I'm the party boy. It's my job. What is a party boy? Hardcore party 25 7 beyond the winter's orbit style! <laughs> <laughs> there is a place far away in Katla, beyond a certain latitude known as Winter's Orbit, where there are 25 hours in a day. Mm -hmm. It is a tremendously cold place abandoned to drunks and failed rock stars, full of eternite depression and half-finished ski flying hills. The Suru live there. Am You're I just close. gonna- We're close, says the young man with the tape player. <laughs> okay. True, hard, full, car. Say nothing. Hardcore. Say Hardcore to the mega. All right. Here comes the night. Bleh. We close. True. Hard. Full. Car. It's hardcore. You're just gonna keep saying it's hardcore, skip aren't a D, you? Skip a D. Skip a danger. Mm. I am the rearranger. Hmm. All right. Well, I don't know what to do with Egghead. Can I speak to Andre? I'm just annoyed. Ah! I think I'm supposed to avoid this guy. Okay. I'll speak to Andre. You see a youngish man bleaching the tips of his hair with a toothbrush. He puts the toothbrush down and extends his hand in greeting. Hello, I'm Andre. It's a pleasure to meet you. Ah, miss finish line. Uh, that's extremely funny. <laughs> uh, I think it's good to have friends that you can just hang up on and they'll think it's funny and not be upset. Hello, I'm Andre. It's a pleasure to meet you. There is definitely something futuristic about his hair, aggressively so. You get the sense that this is what the future will look like. Hmm. Imbecilic. <laughs> yes, you should. Yes, should the future ever come, it will look deeply imbecilic, like this guy. Uh, I'll shake his hand. His grip is strong, sweaty, and warm. He's trying to project and inspire confidence. This is my posse. Noid. The young man with earrings looks at you suspiciously. Uh, an egghead. Egg! <laughs> egghead just yells egg at the tape player high above his head continues to blast strange music. Together with a cell burger, who's out there right now doing some seriously progressive sonic experimentation, we like to think of ourselves as music venue organizers. Uh, okay. How many music venues have you organized? We have many in the pipeline, officer. That means they haven't set up a single one yet. You see, we've been all over Jamrock North prospecting for real estate to establish a new venue in. Uh, Noko Jamala. Nokos Jamala. These are the best characters in the game. Is it the best group of characters or the best characters? So we've had some some other groups of characters that I definitely haven't liked as much as I like these guys yet. You see, we went all over the Jam Rank North. Also for talent. Yeah, thank you, Egghead. And while there is no shortage of raw, unfettered talent spinning tapes in Jam Rock, we've had rotten luck with the real estate part. Place is a shithole. I apologize for my friend Noid's potty mouth. I realize this is not how you speak to a police officer. He has authority issues. Hmm. Uh, this place is pretty bad. Which brings me to the problem of occupied ecclesiastical property. I bet you've noticed the derelict hive of Narcomania on the coast. What are you talking about? I'm talking about a church, and I'm not exaggerating. Even a place of spiritual refuge can become a magnet for all sorts of dope heads and burnouts if left unattended. Dope heads! Burnouts. Well, 
I'm sad to say, that's exactly what happened. Sad because we were just about to put Martinez on the map with one of the maddest dance clubs in Jamrock. Nah, strike that in Revershol. Okay. Strike that, the world! The world! I love the character portrait of this guy. Because of these weird fringes, I keep glancing over and thinking he is an elf. And sad yet, because the dope heads and burnouts hold up in there with the worst kind. <laughs> okay, Noka, I, yes, I was gonna say, Tim seems to be the best character. Uh, two clan for jam, if we can help at all, other than just by uh, chilling, let, let everybody know. Me and also the chat, That's the, it was the royal we is who I was using there. He leans back a little, watching you with a steady, serious gaze, letting you imagine just how bad those do dope heads and burnouts really are. Oh, the uh, Miss Finish line. The vibes in this game all over are weird, but enjoyable, but weird. <laughs> Consistently weird and off-putting, but in a way that I like, I guess. Um, good, this calls for an opinion. You're an expert in those. The writing is impeccable for sure. The art style is impeccable. Just everybody's horrible. Uh, what kind? The spooky kind. I see. <laughs> Spookiness is not a matter for police investigation. You know, officer, you really should judge that for yourself. But keep in mind, their spookiness is the kind that keeps us from restoring this church to a community center and a place of spiritual refuge. Hmm. Also, they don't heat or clean the building. Shit's gonna collapse. People just want to spend taste without them spooking it up, Egghead says. <laughs> Place as bad as si has bad signs. No one can dance like that. Bad signs. Thank you, Egghead. He turns to you. So you're gonna look into it, right? It should be a police matter, getting them out. Whatever spooky stuff they're doing, I'm sure it's not what the Ecclesiastes meant their property for. Hmm. Yeah, I want to play the DJ <laughs> live tour mini ba uh, game that these three are playing in their own game. Um, yeah, I'll look into it. I'll take any quests that anybody offers me. All right, man. Andre is obviously very happy you took him seriously. The whole tent is. The boys exchange giddy looks. Uh, I haven't been to the church yet. So let me ask about the church. Ask Noe to install a measure against the more drifters wandering in. A padlock. It's temporary fix. Just something to contain the situation. Hmm. Quanta, you ask a good question. I, I mean, they seem to describe themselves as egg, so... Uh, you know, they don't seem to be fighting it. That's good enough for me. I had to do it in a hurry. Not my best work, but it should hold for a while. <laughs> Not your best padlocking? Uh, wait, they're locked in there? How long have those people been locked in there? Not long, like a week maybe? <laughs> uh, how can you be sure they haven't starved to death? I'm sure they're alive. I mean, come on. I'm at least 90, maybe 80% sure they're still alive. Oof. Somewhere in the ruinous past that led you here, there was something called exams. You may have learned the term involuntary manslaughter there. Uh, 85% is not good enough when you're dealing with another person's physical well-being. This is, I, I'm gonna end up not getting Superstar Cop. And they're gonna make me a sorry cop again. Because I'm empathizing with people who've been locked into a church. I'm sorry too. I guess it wasn't very hardcore of us to just lock them in like that. Where's the key? The speed freak dips into his belt pack and produces a yellow key. Then he makes a sudden, cool, infused move, tossing it in your general direction. Uh, be the cool cop, catch the key as it flies toward you. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do this. I'll hit this. Perfect. Yeah. Success. You sense the trajectory of the little piece of metal and plastic. The object makes a small ringing sound as it approaches. Just the tiniest chime to your left. <laughs> Kaching! The key hits your palm. The speed freaks nods at you approvingly. Uh, play it? No, I'm gonna bask. Haha. <laughs> the young man with rib cage, cage shaped suspenders. What? Oh, that's what that is. Okay. It's trying to figure out what this body piece was, but I guess they're suspenders. Looks at you standing there with a goofy grin on your face. 
The word August used to be an adjective, and that's how cool it, <laughs> how cool it feels to be old and cool in the eyes of the young. Let's face it, you're near death, yet bathed in the golden light rays of stately grandeur, like a late summer's day, like a daddy-o. That's me, Tequila Sunrise, the daddy-o. Sure, man, tell us what you want to know. Let's do it. These dudes give me strong, uh, y'all ever watch SLC Punk? That's a movie. That's a movie I watched a lot as a youth. Um, I, I know that Noid has his signs, but what's the deal with Egghead? I loved SLC Punk. I actually rewatched it very recently because I was curious about how it held up. Mostly it holds up. Some stuff that's like, and some stuff that's like, Ehh. It's a real mix. Egghead is for sure hardcore Mike. Yeah, with very young, uh, yeah, with a very young, um, God, what's his first name? Matthew Lillard. He's a quiet man, mostly communicates through music and by being a master of ceremonies. What I love, here's an inside tip from the SLC Punk movie is that uh, hardcore Mike is played by, um, God, that dude who was later in, who later plays a lawyer in, um, how I Met Your Mother. Let me, let me look up his name. Anyway, at the end of the SLC Punk, Jason Siegel. At the end of SLC Punk, yeah, Jason Siegel mentions that he, it, it, that character is going on to become a lawyer so he can save the rainforests. And in um, How I Met Your Mother, that is his character's whole deal. He's a lawyer who very much wants to save the rainforest, but then takes a corporate job and gets lost. I always thought that was, I, I didn't realize that until I rewatched re it recently. Uh, but it's a fun little through line. What I'm saying is How I Met Your Mother exists in the SLC Punk uh, universe, and that's canon. Uh, what's a master of ceremonies? You know, a host, a declaimer of slogans. He's a performer. Gets the people going. Party boy! Interesting, sire. A bit like you, then. An MC, for short. How do you communicate with him? Well, he shrugs. He's just kind of here. I don't know how to communicate with him. Have you ever really talked to him? Yeah, sometimes when I like stumble and find my way into his center. What? You have to hear a lot of hardcore to the mega first though. <laughs> SLC Punk sounds like it would be like a D&D &D campaign. A very specific uh, C-based D&D &D campaign. A man smiles mysteriously, choosing to let the beat speak for itself. I get it, he's a puzzle. Um, who exactly are these people in the church? Says <laughs> Seapunk 2021. <laughs> um, the truth is, I don't really know. None of us do. I don't even know how many of these, uh, how many there are. All we've seen are glimpses. How creepy. Uh, anything more you can tell me? Yes, he leans in for emphasis. There's also the machinery. When I first scouted the place back in February, it was abandoned. Empty. It took some time getting the crew together, so about two weeks ago, we came back here hoping to set the stuff up. Suddenly, there are these strange machines lying around in there. One of them has wires running into bowls of water. Wires into water. Never seen anything like it. Andre, tell him about the feeling! Thank you, Egghead. Oh, and it felt like there was something in there with us, watching us from the dark. No, the other one. Um, which other one? I'm not as in tune with my emotions as you are, Egg. Oh. Felt like silence. Awful silence. But you haven't physically seen anyone. Not exactly. We've just seen someone we think is a woman go in and out of the church a couple of times. And felt someone, or something, eyeing us inside. But that's kind of it. Can you tell us more about this machinery? You should talk to Noid about that. I just got a distinct burnout and dope head sign from them. Probably jacked us, uh, jacked up into some snuff station too. Probably, very likely. So, uh, how can you be sure they're burnouts and dope heads if you haven't actually seen them? Well, honestly, Andre says, I can't, but I am. Haas, I have not found out about whatever the pale is yet. At least not that I know of. This is a below feeble attempt at avoidance. Basically, he's attempting to weaponize idiocy. 
Uh, the concept of weaponizing idiocy feels appropriate and real and a thing that I've had to deal with before, which is funny but sucks. <laughs> uh... Wow, you can't, but you do. I should add weaponized idiocy to my own repertoire. Hey now, Andre says, I'm 70% sure they're substance abusers. Don't let all that technology fool you. He makes little quotation marks with his fingers when he says technology. Where do you think drugs come from? Yeah, okay. That's... All right. <laughs> okay, Andre. Um, I wanted to ask you about this tent full of equipment. I see you brought your own water. Hate to tell you, but it reeks of sweat in here. It's with all the nosafed. Uh, I see you brought your own water. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, good to have. Bitch to carry. When I first scouted the place, I did some reconnaissance. I'm not sure the church even has running water. And it's distilled, too. Oh? He, he doesn't know what to say. <laughs> it's the one they sell at the fuel station. It's like he's lying to you, my liege, but he's slippery enough that there's nothing for you to grab hold of. What? Is there a mystery having to do with the water? Uh, I hate to tell you, but it reeks of sweat in here. It does, doesn't it, Andre says. Noid says, told you we have a smell problem. He picks up a piece of telephone cord and inspects it. Wait, I also smell ether. Why? Ether? I don't smell ether. Do you, Noid? I can't experience. I'm so suspicious about what's happening. It's mixed with a peculiar chemical scent, like laundry detergent. Are these guys just making drugs? He sniffs the air, then shrugs. It doesn't take a forensic scientist to guess it's drug related. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, game. They look and act like the kind of guys who've done their fair share. However, their breathing is regular, their jaws stay put, and their pupils aren't dilated. So, not under the influence right now. At least not under the influence of stimulants. That doesn't rule out hallucinogens, benzos, and depressants. How do you know all of this? I'm an addict. That's probably why. And a cop is one of those. What's with all the nosefed? The what now? He leans in to hear you better. Pointing to the bottle of nasal spray on the counter. You've got a lot of it lying around. Oh, the old ultra. We, uh... He's like an actor looking to the souffleur for his line. I have a major sinus infection, Stuffy knows. We all do. Shit's all blasted up. <laughs> Winter. Can't even breathe. You sound fine to me. Yes, he nods energetically. That's all Nosafed's doing. Without the Noza, I'd be drowning in shit right now. Nosafed is the shit. <laughs> Noid chimes in. Uh. Yeah, actually, can I have some? I've got some, uh, nose problems too. <laughs> All right, enough of this. Ooh, I've got a new extremely low check. Maybe something isn't quite as you've been told. Take a moment to analyze. Okay. Uh, I got, I've got a plus two to this because of the, because I smelled a bunch of stuff. Is it? Oh, my logic is four. For a moment, I was like, the check is only four, but I'm not gonna, s I'm gonna have a very low chance to succeed. Um, this is a white check, so I'm gonna try it. Big money, big money, big money, big money. Oh, that's a failure. Logic is not my strong suit. Yeah, that is a rough one. Okay, so for the speed freaks who want to start a club for dance music, that much checks out. Youth likes music. Youths like music. <laughs> You feel as though you might have even liked music more when you were young, too. But you digress. I like the implication that this game's making that when you get older, you just don't like music anymore. <laughs> the gist of it is, they want to turn the church into a club, but a suspicious element has overtaken the building. It's very important to understand what the gist of it things is. Always consult the gist before making up your mind. This is going well. <laughs> Uh, plus, it has to be considered, you can't invent the future of dance music in this smelly old tent. Imagine if you had the church. That settles it. Analysis complete. Their story checks out. Um, this is like in a, a regular tabletop game when 
your when the DM is like, roll for perception, and then you fail, and they're like, there's nothing there. It's like, I know I'm gonna be back to talk to you boys. So you had a talk with Andre, and now you want to discuss things with Noi. He stoops over his toolbox as usual, shuffling bolts around angrily. That's fine, man, but I've got to warn you, our signs are still off. It will take some time for me to get my sigh on. <laughs> Welcome, generally, Jenna. Um, you haven't miss missed much. I've talked to these three club boys who are definitely not making drugs, according to my knowledge of the world. Uh... Uh, Quanta, I agree, is extremely inscrutable. Uh, why are you called annoyed? He picks up some sort of widget. The hardcore aesthetic is esoteric. It is not meant to be discussed with the law at this moment. I don't understand what that means. Sync the signs with annoyed. Okay, so I've got two quests now to better understand these fools. I can see that. Further sign matching would do, be, do good for us. One way to achieve sign syn synchronicity would be by getting us into the church. All right, dude. Um, tell me about the machines you saw at the church. He cringes. Weird stuff, specialized. There's a data processor and some sort of long-waved machinery. Wires going into water. Gives off a spy sign or some kind of fucked up Samarian science sign. You know, the kind that goes head first into the supernatural. The People's Republic of Samara is a product of Revachol's sister revolution on the island of Grad. Uh, it's known as a severely degenerated rogue state. What's wrong with a supernatural? Nothing's wrong with it. It should definitely be researched. You can stick to... You can still do sick shit with it, though. Alright. The supernatural. So you think that's real? That actually exists? Most of it doesn't exist, but there's also stuff that isn't allowed to exist because the moralists think it's too dangerous for the plebes. Interesting. Uh, psionic powers, pale related diseases, pretenders pretending to be human, folk rights, that kind of stuff. Uh, but I thought we'd be okay now, sign wise. I'm doing what I can, he continues to rearrange his tools. He looks like a well-thought-out individual. The synchronization might be worth it in the long run. All right, welcome back. Hey, Ken. Get close. True, hard, full, car. Say nothing. Hardcore. Say Hardcore nothing. to the mega. Say nothing. Internally coherent. Still all say nothing. Core. All right, yeah. Say nothing. Hardcore. No, but seriously, I'm a little worried it isn't. The question is, what is the question? Oh. Just answer the question. But there was no question. Oh, fuck. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try Be one more close. time. I'm gonna try one more time. True, hard, full, car, hardcore. Hardcore to the mega, internally coherent. I was wondering if you knew who killed the mercenaries hanging behind the whirling and rags host hostel. Good morning, yeah! One, two, three! Yako Kata! The place to be! <laughs> um, but Yako Kata is a catastrophe zone, a desolate wasteland. It can't be the place to be. Yako Kata! The hardcore place! <laughs> An intricate system of irrigation and networks pockmarking the earth, intermittent seas of phosphorus mud, ripping charpolin, fluttering to the wind. A pair of molten rubber boots also comes to mind. All in all, a truly hardcore place. Okay, one more. I know I, I said the. I know I said the last one was the last one. This is gonna be the last one. For True, me. hard, full, car, hardcore, hardcore to the mega, internally coherent, all core, all right, yeah, hardcore. Ah. <laughs> no, but seriously, I'm a little worried. The question it? is, what is the question? That would have been good if I had asked you a question, but I didn't. Now it's just idiotic. I don't know if this is going to get me closer to Egghead, but let's try it. But there was a question? What, dude? Be All close. right. This is for real True, the last time. hard, time. full, car. Hard car. But is it? I mean, really? Yeah. This young man adds a capital G before the H in his yeah and ah. This produces a guttural 
Gottwaldian, Gottwaldian accent. It makes him more animal, more into it. Uh, or maybe it's not Gottwaldian. Maybe it's Orangis. Maybe, probably an homage to Orange. An homage to Orange. <laughs> yeah, it's fun to say. Where Arno van Eyck is from, judging by his name. Could you be listening to an Arno van Eyck creation right now? So this is the famous Van Eyck I'm hearing. You know about him? He moves his mouth, but sound doesn't come out. His eyes are the size of saucers. Looks like you've rendered him speechless. You know Van Eyck? Uh, yeah, I'm a major Eyckhead. Wow. The skinny wraith looks at you with some disbelief. So am I. So am I. Ha, <laughs> Egghead. Oh, is that why they call you Egghead? Because... Egghead to the mega. The K became the G. The boy became the man. <laughs> the advent? Okay, great. D I don't think that did it, though. Be close. True, hard, full, car. It's hard car. Give a disc. Be uh, close. True. Hard. Hardcore. Hardcore to the mega. Internally coherent. All core. All right. Yeah. Hardcore. The question is, what is the question? Uh, but there was a. I thought we'd had a breakthrough Be close. just then. True. Hard. Full. Hardcore. Hardcore to the mega. Here comes the night. <laughs> Be close. True. Hard. Yeah. Full. Car. Hardcore. <laughs> yeah. The V to the E to the A 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 to the G to the H to the hyphen mark. Uh, it sounded like he said hyphen mark, not exclamation mark. Yeah. Yeah. He missed one A. Uh, you missed an A there, but that's okay. I'm a pretty lenient cop. It's nice to be important, but it's important to be nice. <laughs> Egghead. Um, alright, I like it, Ken, but I don't know if I'm getting True. anywhere with Hard, him. full, co hardcore. Hardcore to the mega. Internally coherent. All core. All right. You gotta get the people going. Yeah, request. I want everybody as close to the stage as possible. Okay, well, I'm gonna circle back to you, Egghead. I'm gonna, I'm gonna crack you, buddy. That's not an egg-related pun. I'm just gonna crack you. I'm gonna make myself more tea while the sting loads. I have begun keeping hot water in this thermos that I got in Japan that I haven't been able to use because I can't drink liquids outside anymore. But I'm very excited that I get a chance to use it now. Yes? Uh, nothing. You're fine, Ken. Let's talk to this lady. We never talked to the person who was out here. <laughs> Project Marley. Um, I don't know about any teat tasting, and I don't know what you've heard. It's definitely. <laughs> I chose to let that go through, so that's... I saw what was happening, and I just allowed it to go through. Uh, I do know what you meant. <laughs> the tea tasting was absolutely delightful. Uh, it was packed full of people, and there was some uh, technical issues, so it went an hour longer than we expected it to. But that was kind of okay, because it was a lot of tea. But uh, the, the way we did the, teeps, the steeping was a very small amount of tea and then a very small amount of water, but like eight times. Uh, and I decided that that's really what I like for drinking tea myself. I always make too much tea, and then I never want to re-steep the leaves, which is a waste. <laughs> um, okay, a shaggy-looking girl in her late twenties or early twenty, late teens or early twenties, kneels on the ice with an electronic contraption in her hand. Hearing you approach, she looks up. Oh, hello there. Uh, I don't know if I found a new favorite tea, but it definitely convinced me to give oolongs another go. I have a couple oolongs that. I just, cause you have to, you're supposed to steep oolongs like five or six times. Um, the like when you get a nice oolong and it's just so much. 
She must be Estelle, the last of the Speed Freak's posse. Everyone knows drugs make you invulnerable to cold. You bet this one likes to party. Dear child, it's freezing. Where's your hat? <sighs> she... Maybe she didn't hear you. Say it a little bit louder. I said... I say! You should have the hat on. So should you. Oh. Oh, shit. I've got a froggy visor. That's way better than a hat. <laughs> um... I should, and I do, point to oh, Froggy I Visor. I didn't notice that. <laughs> yeah, Froggy Count hats. Froggy hat counts. Mm. I've been doing a lot of word flipping recently. And that was another one. Oh, what is my favorite tea? I really love Sencha. I love a beautiful vegetal Sencha. <sighs> uh, oh, I didn't notice that. Uh... It's nice. You should wear one, too, if you're planning on staying out in this weather. Yeah, well... Look, man, fuck the hat. <laughs> um, I have minus one authority. Regain authority in her eyes. This is a red check. It cannot be retried. And I have a minus one to it. Maybe I won't retry it. Is that kind of language really I'm sorry necessary? I said fuck the hat. I was concentrating on something else. Yeah, I'm the My one disrupting this way. and it rubbed off on me. There's a pained expression on her face. She'll answer your questions now. Um, what's that device you have there? This, she breathes into her freezing fingers. It's a portable recording device. It's for field readings. Low quality, but still. And the wires are actually just one wire. I picked on it till the braiding came loose. The wire leads to a contact microphone. A contact mic records sounds from inside things, like this ice. Hmm. Your mangled brain <laughs> Your mangled brain would like you to know there is a boxer called contact mic. <laughs> Thanks, game. Uh what am I supposed to do with this encyclopedia? No idea. Okay, great. Does this have anything to do with contact mic? Uh yeah, I record stuff with it. No, I mean the boxer contact mic. Ah, no, this is a contact microphone. It's for recording inside solid objects. Contact mic just beats people up. That's not fair. And an underestimate. Understatement. <laughs> Mangled brain, fr Brian fronts a C-Punk brand. <laughs> I is, I mean, I think you could argue C-Punk is probably, I'm just thinking about like um, Dropkick Murphys or like, Bands that do punk sea shanties. Feels like that's gotta exist, right? Um, you know, Contact Mike doesn't just beat people up. Contact Mike is a role model. Um, she says in response. An entire litany spews forth. <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, you heard right. You should try to be more like Contact Mike, a successful athlete and an inspirational figure who has overcome social, physical, and mental obstacles. Man, you are one weird cop, she says. <laughs> um, this isn't about me. This is about your lack of respect for one of boxing's greats and for yourself. What is it with you and this Mike guy, she pauses. The question is rhetorical. Oh, good. <laughs> Okay, I gained a new thought. The litany of contact, Mike. Uh, <laughs> oh, hi to Mori. I hope they are sleeping. Uh, and that that's the sleepy reason. Not that they want to, like, want to sleep and they can't. Uh, okay, if it floats your boat, I'll be more like contact, Mike, and less like me. <laughs> Self-respect is not to meant, to meant to float any boats but your own. I'll keep that in mind for future use, she says. Okay. Uh, how does the thing work? The mic? I don't know exactly. Somehow it doesn't pick up vibrations from the air. The box says it only picks up structural born sounds, if you like techno babble. And uh, where'd you get it from? Some place I got the recorder from. The Palis Palisium. What's the Palisium? 
Oh, man, you haven't been to the Palaceum? She forgets herself for a moment. It's the coolest place in this whole drug-addled shithole. It's a music club and a synthesizer workshop on Boogie Street in Jamrock. On Boogie Street in Jamrock does sound like it's a disco lyric. <laughs> Go into Boogie Street, Boogie Street, it's in Jamrock. Musicians live there like real musicians. I once saw Arno Van Eyck. Interesting. This the guy your friend Egghead likes? Oh yeah, Egg's really into him. Maybe even too into him. He's a pretty intense personality. I'm pretty intense too. I don't know what that means. I grind, the cop yells. I don't know what that means either. <laughs> um... <laughs> Nor do I, but I have concrete evidence that I rock in the form of a wrecked tape player and a completely trashed hostel room. Boom. That's cool, she breathes on her fingers. Looks like she doesn't know what to say. You're right. Time has deserted me. Ah, <laughs> oh, I damaged my morale. She looks at you oddly. Sucks, man. She squints her eyes for a second, trying to remember something, then lets go of it. Was there something else about the contact mic, perhaps? I tried to hype myself up too much, and it hurt me. Um, that's life sometimes, I guess. Actually, I had some non-mic questions for you. Uh, tell me more about your associates. My associates? She blows on her chilled fingers. I haven't got much to say about them. What do you mean? You must know something about them. Of course I do. I just don't tell people about my friends and who they are and so on. I don't provide information on them. To the cops! Fair and respect. Um, what about you? Tell me something about yourself. Me? I'm a silver bird. High above and to the east, the cold winds blow over the feathers of an early songbird. She lands on the stone ledge of a tall building. Her beak is a silvery gray. Aha, okay. Maybe I'll ask later about this. New task, get a cell to talk about her associates. Yeah, Haas, I agree. This whole, everything that we, all of the conversations we've had in today's game have been more deranged and disconnected from reality than usual. What are you doing out here in the cold? Recording, I guess. And was it, is it that you're recording exactly? I think I'm recording cracks in the ice, but there's no way to tell. Not without headphones. I think I just recorded your footsteps too. Not sure how that'll sound. What happened to those old headphones? My boyfriend stole him. What for? I don't know, man. Things. Just stuff you need for life. <laughs> A lie. They were probably pawned off for something s suspicious. That was my, not my editorializing. This It has... <laughs> it's spelled suspicious with multiple S's. And what about these recordings for... What are these recordings for? The cracks, the footsteps. Uh, Nicholas, I entirely forgot that we were supposed to be searching for the cryptozoologist over here. Um, the musicians in the Palisium use them for making music. They loop the stuff, cutting the tapes together. They make music out of the cracks in the ice and keys jangling. Crazy sounds like that. It's hard to explain. Anyway, I thought I'd make some too. It's supposed to be like a music place anyway. I don't really know what I'm doing. They use synthesizers too. But I don't have a synthesizer. Hey, see, Kim's here. He's paying attention. Take this. You're cold. The lieutenant begins to take off his jacket. No, man, fuck that. I'm cool. I'm sorry I said that. I'm sorry about the fuck. <laughs> it's okay. The lieutenant backs up. He throws you a glance. Uh. Oh, I do want to give her some clothes, but I can't. I can't give her a froggy hat. Uh. Hey, Chad! Even if you're late. I mean, I was also late, so. Uh. I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> Now this is where a hat would come in handy. Yeah, maybe you were right about the hat. Oh, that's right. Can I? Can I just slip in here and put on? See, I can't access my inventory in conversation, but I can look at the litany of contact mic. Temporary research bonus, minus one logic, minus one conceptualization, minus one drama. It's time you once again to it's time once again to return to the 20 things you'd like to say about contact Mike, the boxer who is apparently a paragon of open competition. It really doesn't get any better than this. Any better. Both inside 
and outside the ring. Stop. Point at somebody. Somebody in the distance. Point your finger at him. He will point his finger back at you, vaulting into an impassable gulf of finance and privilege, too. Weird. Okay. Fucking weird. What a weird conversation. Um, I also don't have the stuff needed to uh, do anything about that. I don't have I don't have brain space for a new thought. Uh, you said it's supposed to be a music place. Did you mean the one Andre's got planned? The church? Yeah, she nods towards, towards the church. The boys think it could be a place, like the Palisseum or something. Stupid. It's really not going to be a Palisseum, that's for sure. And who are these boys? Yeah, Andre and the guys inside the tent. Why are you freezing out here while the boys are inside? They got too much stuff crammed in there. No room. Didn't you see for yourself? It's mostly music stuff, like this tape recorder, but bigger. Yeah, it's the head op head it, the opposite of head empty, no thoughts. Head full, no thoughts. <laughs> um, you mean like those headphones your boyfriend sold? Yep, they were pretty. I'm sorry we sold those. Why not just leave some of it outside so you don't have to freeze? That stuff is more expensive than I am. Oh, Excel. More expensive than any of us, really. Doesn't matter. I can take the cold. All right, I am gonna conclude. Uh, uh, I'm gonna give her a hat. I'm gonna put on a different hat. <laughs> Here's how this is gonna go. I'm gonna put on a different hat and then I'm gonna give her that hat so that she has a hat. This is the only other hat I have is this orange bum hat, but it'll be warm. So you talk to my associates, right? Are you going to help us? With the church, I mean. Yeah, I'll Great. help you. Let us know if there's any progress, will ya? We've been waiting for weeks here. I will let you know. Uh... Alright. I just have to remember how to get back to the- Here we go. Uh, give her your hat. Here. You need more this this more than I do. Yeah! She puts it on. It's a bit big for her, but she says, thank you. I helped. I wonder if this was gonna make this empathy check better. Yeah! I also got a plus two bonus on this check because I'm more like contact Mike now. <laughs> plus one, gave her a hat. Oh no! Nicholas, where did she get that my m lady emote? Hmm... <laughs> Uh, okay. This is a low check, but I can retry it. So let's, let's see what we can do. Big money, big money, big money. Success! The device is still warm from her touch and heavy as a brick from the batteries inside. The company logo, Omicron, adores its yellow plastic cover. Inside, the tape is rolling. The girl looks at the device in your hand. I'm sorry I have to sit here on the ice feeling miserable, at your age or any age, in this weather, waiting for it to get dark. She looks at you in the eye, her pupils wide, surrounded by a ridiculous amount of makeup. The people who built this world intended it to be better for you, but they failed. It is easier to live in their fu failure with this by your side, tapping on the tape recorder. The wind howls. She remains silent. It's real. Tell her. It's not a childish fantasy. It can be a real weapon against what's coming for you now. What the fuck is happening? Uh, bird.exe, yes. Uh, I will do that after whatever this conversation is. What is her shoulders shake a little? <laughs> um, the dark, nothing. If you got this, don't be scared. Oh, uh, this is so hard because I, what I do want is to tell her not to be scared. But what I am going to do is talk more about fucking contact Mike, right? Like, right? That's what I have to do. Ugh, I hate that this is what I have to do. Yep, I'm once again reminded of how contact Mike rose from the slums of St. Baptiste to the top of the boxing world, overcoming adversary and serious brain trauma. Nothing is coming. Nothing he wouldn't knock out in three rounds. The real fight for the right attitude. I can't believe this turned into another mic thing. <laughs> Me neither, honestly, so. Fine, okay, I'll stick with to it. She takes the device from you and places it in her lap. 
I'll knock it out in three rounds. <laughs> that was such... That was such a beautiful moment. I can't believe I ruined it with more contact mic talk. Fuck. Oh my god. Stupid. So thanks, I guess, she says, for the psych sessions. Maybe I can return it. What's been eating you, officer? You said eating me? There's <laughs> nothing eating me. <laughs> Come on, I can tell. She shakes her head slowly. But okay, be a bordiero about it if you want to. I guess there is something that's been making my life hell. There's about eight things making my life hell, but it's mostly just me, I would say. What is it? She listens intensely. Um... Hmm. I think it's the plight of the working class. Oh, really? Th none of the four things that were listed there are any of the things that are actually plaguing me in this game. Uh, this feels like it's just another check to figure out if I'm like a moralist or a capitalist or whatnot. The golem of capital runs rampant, smashing, smashing creator and slave alike. I fear the process is irreversible. Wow, social justice really matters that much to you? That's commendable. I really had you shaken up there. Are you sure that it's- that's it, though? Uh... No, that's probably not it, is it? <laughs> no, it sounds like you've got- you've just got chick issues. Ah, it, This lady gets it. Um, now that you mention it, I found these lizards I'd thrown in the trash. They might have something to do with it. Okay, why do you think that? Uh, <laughs> they were written in a woman's hand, and boy did reading them not make me feel good. There you have it then. Chick problems. Not political at all. Who was she? I don't remember. Really? She appears to believe you. You seem pretty upset about this chica. Are you sure you don't remember anything about her? I remember her scent, and that's all. Wow, man, that's some pretty strange shit. She rubs her sides for warmth. Are you sure the letters are for you? Yeah, I'm sure. Why would I have reacted so strongly otherwise? How come you don't remember, though? Is it like some selective memory thing? Uh, I think it's more about me getting so unbelievably drunk I completely erased all memory of this world. Yeah, or it might be that. This one time I did so much booze that I forgot too. It's obviously she's done more than booze. Or it might just be psych bullshit, you know? Conning stings wonk. <laughs> uh, what is this conning stein wink? Oh, you know, the psych thing that they've got people going on there. Rich people like it. People in conning stein are mostly rich. Hmm. Thanks for the bullshit psych thing, then. You're welcome, she says. <laughs> uh, I love this lady. She thinks for a second, stretching her jaw. Might be for the best the, to keep that shit forgotten, though. Just my opinion. It, if, it just, if it itches, don't scratch. My pain threshold says yes, but it itches really, really bad. Um, great. Tell me more about this music place you've been planning in the church. It's supposed to become like a club for anodic dance music, like that new style of synthesizer stuff they play at the Palisium. Except that, yeah, she looks at the old wooden church up on the poles. As a mean wind comes bellowing in, the six-story structure lets out a doleful shriek. That's what a doleful shriek sounds like. The floorboards are twisting and the shooting beams that are slowly cracking like bones. Far east of the Golden Delta, beyond the industrial port, there is a black patch of unlit coast with the smallest creatures on the ice. There will never be a club for anodic music here. Not in a million years. What is anodic dance music? Secret task complete? Oh! I a secret task, and I did it. What is anodic music? You know, anodic, cathodic, music that's made with electronic instruments. Like what? Synthesizers and tape consoles, microcomputers too. Anything that uses electricity but isn't guitars. Also, found sound. Stuff like that. This is an evolutionary step up from amplified instruments, which in turn are a step up from acoustic instruments. What comes after it, you wonder? A black tinted nothingness or something finer? 
Ooh. Enough about the church then. And that's enough conversation. Okay, let me look at my stats real quick. Uh, oh, I do not remember. Oh, bird.exe. Here are the stats. Uh, don't have enough to level up anything at the moment. Uh. Hmm. <laughs> the origin story for this world's Daft Punks. Which two of these four characters are become Daft Punk? That's my question. Okay. I have no idea what I'm going to put my next point in, too. Uh, maybe visual calculus. Maybe composure. I don't know. Oh, you're welcome, personette. I have a feeling this stream is much more uh, audiobook-like than, <laughs> than the Blender streams, which are highly visual. A cell and egg? Yeah, that feels right. That feels like the right combo. Egghead and Noid? I mean, clearly Egghead is one of them, right? I think we can all agree that Egghead is one of the two members of this universe's Daft Punk. Oh, hold on. I gotta put my hat back on. Froggy hat, get back in there. Beautiful. I love the physics on the shopping bag. All right, uh, I should also save. There's one thing everybody can agree on, it's Egghead, period. All right, let's go open the door to this church that may or may not have people locked in it. <laughs> yeah, uh, two clam for jam, you make a great point. The sign reads, St. Brune 1147. You feel the, vi the shadow of a very large building fall upon you. Are there markings? Dusty pews in the shadows. Many seem to be missing. Ooh, some money. An altar shrouded in dark, or something like that. It's too dark to tell. I'm gonna circle this building before I go into it. Ooh, a rock. A highlighted rock. <laughs> there is money in that rock? Alright, there's more buildings back here. Let's do the church first, though. Oh, getting too wrapped up in Hades and forgetting that literally the entire world forgets is a very relatable feeling. All right. Uh, heavy wooden doors more than twice your height stand shut in front of you. The rectangular sea-worn ornament appears to be in stark contrast to the padlock carelessly drilled into the wood. Hmm. Open the padlock with the key. The lock turns easily. You hear a click as the shackle pops open. Feels like electricity in a very small piece of nothingness. Let's go, Kim says. A great whoosh of air rushes into the dark innards of the church as though rushing to fill a great vacuum in the heart of the city. All right, okay, let's see what we got. Cool. Cool, uh... A strange stillness fills you as you look ahead. You should walk here, not run. What's gonna happen if I run, game? This grotesque wooden figure looks half finished. The figure was added later. It's not a part of the original church. I also love a creepy church. More of the forked lighting lightning pattern you saw outside 
Bark beetles? No, it looks intentional. Some long forgotten style. The blackboard is filled with complex equations. They look recent. Here are some wires. Yeah, the wires and the bowls of water. A water, uh, the bowl is filled with water. The live wire runs directly into it. Ah, two decks of reel-to-reel -reel tapes spinning on empty. A portable Harman, uh, Harman Wuxi tape recorder. Cold wind blows in from the broken gallery. Makes her skin crawl. Is it possible it's recording something? Someone's siphoning electrical current from outside into this antenna. A machine stands in the corner, watching over, watched over by the figures on the stained glass window. It's turned on and quivering with soft electricity. Another radio computer, Kim says, and this time it's already turned on. He seems cautious around the machine. We should leave. I doubt this place bears any connection to the case. Well, Kim, I think you're probably right, but I've, I've, we are definitely not leaving. Uh, wait, let me just investigate it. You see the virescent play and print buttons on the keyboard. A hatch connected to the central compartment is wide open. The lieutenant says nothing. You see the machine's glowing frame reflected back from his diamond-shaped glasses. You're free to proceed. Look inside the compartment. Behind the hatch sits a cube-like crisscross of filaments smoldering in the dark like fireflies. Silver tape on the side says in a black marker, Log, February through March. Uh, this machine is the machine's filament memory. Press play to access its con contents. I press play. The speaker hums to life. Static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. An old lady greets you. Her voice sounds a hundred years old. Good afternoon, Fortress Accident on St. Brune. This is the East Insulidian Repeater Station 1. Please repeat, is this the personal log? It's the same old woman you spoke with through the radio computer in the doomed commercial center. Hmm. Are you alive or are you a machine? Yes, I'm alive. I am 40, 74 years old and my name is Yvonne. <laughs> now please repeat, is this the personal log? <laughs> the lieutenant whispers in your ear. She repeats passwords. Programming people are all paranoid. Uh -huh. uh, okay, but where are you? How did you know where I am? I work as a repeater at the Eastern Solidian Repeater Station. It's my job to know where you are, Fortress Accident. As for me, well, some static. Then, I'm sitting in my cubicle surrounded by a wall of radios. On an island in the, middle, in the river Esperance, a small woman, all skin and bones, sits in a room filled with audio equipment. Thousands of tiny lights are reflected back from her prescription lenses, like stars in the dark. Now, please tell me why you're calling Fortress Accident. Uh, I looked inside the core, but the tape on the filament just says log February through March. Good. Please repeat the password. Let's look around. There's no use trying to guess the password. Um, a password? I'm really bad at passwords. Can you give me a hint? No, she says. All right, fine, Yvonne. Int system is not part of the pr protocol for repeater stations. I don't know the password. Received. I will register this login attempt. Fortress accident, is there anything else I can do for you today? Mm. Thanks, I'm finished with this call. Man. Let's press pint. Nothing happens. Alright, I'm gonna look around for a password. Uh, I see what looks like some shoes and money, so let's go get that. Ooh! I found some empathetic shoes. Mesquite Bangers Red Brogues. And some cash. Hold on, let's look at these shoes. Ooh, pretty cool. Pretty cool shoes. Um, the cavalry boots give me plus one perception, and the snakeskin give me plus one composure, minus one savoir faire. 
Uh, gosh, those are striking. Uh, I kind of like them. I don't know if I really need empathy more than I need perception, though. But, you know what? This is about fashion, not skills. So, how do we feel, chat? We like these brogues? They are very nice shoes. I would definitely wear these shoes. These dapper snakeskin shoes have an almost invisible white-on-white -white flower motif sewn into the tongue. The toe caps are still dusty from lying in the church. Alright. Well, I... Pretty into these shoes. So, let's stick with them. Uh, just go fashion.tumblr.com. I would subscribe. This big eerie hole uh, giving me strong Candyman vibes. Which I'm pretty into, actually. Wait, go back. Ooh. The silence is part of the church. It's almost palpable. All of the shifting matter and shuffling of life living things is gone. Nothing seems to exist beyond the church anymore. Maybe if you were to stand in just the right spot, even your footsteps would be completely silent. Wait. I think I hear something. And then it's gone. Almost all of it, but for the faintest of hums. You can bear hardly hear your own breathing. Yell as loud as you can. Your voice is barely audible, not a howl, but the softest of whimpers. Stomp your feet and clap your hands. You produce a few muffled thumps, after which the silence feels even more total somehow. Turn to Kim. What's happening? Kim, what's happening? The lieutenant points to his ears and shakes his head. Then he leans closer. Can you hear anything? Hmm. Not really, but it's extraordinary. I've never experienced things like this. I was wondering why the church was built with such strange acoustics, Kim says. Maybe the church was designed this way to prevent boisterous activity, singing and dancing on the premises. Hmm. Maybe they wanted dis to discourage singing and dancing. Kim says, mm, could be. He doesn't seem entirely convinced, though. Look up into the bell tower. The orderly rows of ceiling panels become barely visible, then disappear completely in the darkness in the tower overhead. Ooh, I have an even chance, and this is a red check, which cannot be retried. Boy, do I regret putting on these shoes now. Those boots gave me a plus one. To perception. So actually, I might just slip those boots on and try this check. What if I don't want to know what's up there? Oh, I don't... I'm not going to have a choice. I'm just going to have to make this check now. And if I get it, I get it. And if I don't, I don't. Okay, well... Damn! Curse me for loving these shoes! Okay, well... I mean, I just got to go for it. All right, all right, all right, let's do it. Big money, big money, big money. Yes! <laughs> Success. Oh, it's doing something cool. It's like there's something moving up there. A shadow has emerged from the tower and is making its way toward you through all the other shadows. On the ceiling? Yes. The darkness makes the ceiling feel infinitely far away. It's climbing. Climbing down, holding onto the beams. Follow the shadow's movement. It's not a shadow anymore, becoming more substantial as it grows closer. The shape of an animal descends. Kim says, Officer, is there something up there? The lieutenant follows your gaze, attempting to see what it is that you are seeing. Oh no, you've lost sight of it. Where did it go? Blink. <gasps> you see something, holy shit, hanging from the rafters, looking straight at you with dark eyes. Maybe it's possible to talk to it? Uh, gonna go ahead and save real quick. 
Uh, hello. Tiago. The ma shadow is a man, but a man made of the same stuff as the carpentry of the building. What the fuck? He is studying you intently. Say nothing. Be quiet for now. The man leans forward a little, fixing you with a steady, unreadable gaze, then speaks. I bet your alcohol use has made you into a scared little pussy, Holmes. But don't worry. Everything's gonna be alright. You've come to the right place. That accent is v Villa Lobos, a peninsula in Mesquite and, and a district in Jamrock. There's a sizable contingent of Villa Lobos speaking Mesk in Revachur. Hold on, stop it right there. Pussy? What's with that? Thank you, game. I'm not scared. I just don't understand why the female sexual organs have to be associated with weakness. You really gotta kiss her free nerves. Pussy in this usage comes from pussilanimous. Everybody knows that. Mm. Uh, game. Sorry, game. I'm gonna have to call you on that one. Uh, mm, game. Mm. Uh, yeah. Mm. Chill out, man. Here you can receive the mother in law. And when you're ready, she will take your hand and lift you out of the despair at the bottom of the bottle. Hmm. This man is obviously a habitual narcotics user. Do we really need to question him? Yeah, that, that, are, cause pretending that is pusillanimous, that reminds me of Vig of that. Weird, weird, horrible South Park episode where they uh, argue that it's okay to use the F word. And it's like, it's a lot of effort to go in through to saying a word that maybe you can just not say. This man is obviously, oh, do we need to question him? Kim, that's a great question. Hey, and what was that about the bottle again? You haven't even drank that much lately. Lay off it already, sheesh. Um... <laughs> I like that I can just run away, but no. Yeah, I guess I have a bit of a problem and that it's been getting out of hand lately. This does good, eh? I see deep inside you. Your body and spirit are suffering greatly from overindulgence. And you don't even know it. Hmm. I mean, I definitely know that my body and mind are suffering. So, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm very in touch Not with my all suffering. Of it. I was like you once. You don't know all the havoc Evino is wreaking on your mind and your spirit. Necesitas parar, Romy. <laughs> yeah, Sark One, I'm with you. This, if this dude's made out of wood, maybe it. How how is he using the? You drug? know, actually, since we're here, you may want to pay attention to what the ceiling climber is saying. <laughs> Kim, <laughs> Kim, Kim. I can't believe you're flipping on me just because this guy's trying to get me to sober up. Kim. Um. Hmm. <laughs> uh, adjust your tie. Who do you think you are? Some crazy guy under the roof? What is this shit? It don't matter who I am, Way. I'm just bringing you that message of their mother's love. She don't want you to hang yourself on your own stubbornness. Hmm. His words echo in the cold air of the church. This is the church of the mother of silence. You are welcome here. He sways gently on the beams, waiting for you to take it all in. You have no idea what the fuck he's talking about. Is he just trying to throw you off your game? Whatever it is, he's quite confident about it. Just look how gracefully he sways. "'Tis not an act, my liege, saying perchance he hath deceived his very self. This man is a zealot." Uh, did you just climb down from the church tower? Sure did, Holmes. Uh, are you human? You weren't moving like a human. He chuckles. I am at least in part, Holmes, until the mother's love burns away the crude distinctions of the body. What does he mean in part? Uh, well, at least you're human. That's a relief. He grins. Glad you're feeling more comfortable. First timers are always nervous. What the fuck's happening? There must be something illegal about living in a church ceiling. I don't know what yet, but there must be. I'm not gonna ask that. I don't care where you live. Okay, I have other questions. 
Um, some ravers want to turn this place into a nightclub? The ones in the tent outside, right? I seen them. They think they're scared of me. Um, so what do you think uh, about the nightclub, that is? Why not? They wouldn't bother me none. I'm usually way up there imbibing. Ain't no music on earth that can reach where I go. Maybe even nice to have some company. Alright, he's into it. Cool. What are you doing here? He says this is a special place. There's a preparation in the world up there. A way out into nothingness. What? He nods toward the ceiling. This church was built around it for purposes of veneration. I circle it, nurtured by the silence bestowed by the mother. One of these days, I'll be pure enough to go drink from it directly. What the fuck? What? Who's this mother of silence you keep talking about? Oh, that's no simple question, I say. She is one who can't be painted or sculpted. She is a cavity in the dark beyond sense. She saved me, but I couldn't describe her to you. No one can, Holmes, and no one ever will. What will happen once you drink from this preparation? I will be incinerated, but not destroyed. <laughs> Finally at one with the state of the world before reality began. That sounds a bit like substitution behavior, no? You know a thing or two about that. Uh, you sure you didn't just switch one drug for another? It's not like that at all, man. It's just faith and joyful service. Too gleeful, those words. He's lying. Not to you. To his own very self. Yeah, was, I'm, yeah. This game is bigger and so much weirder than I thought it was going to be. Uh, uh, but like, if he found his well, how? Oh, uh, faith is a kind of drug. He shakes his head. I've heard that before. Way I don't know. I can't, uh, and I know I can't convince you on the spot. But think, when's the last time you woke up from silent communion with a hangover, regretful, regretting what you did last night? Uh, <laughs> I think love might have been my drug of choice, and I think I'm still hung over from it. He looks at you gravely. She took you for a good spin, huh? Don't worry, bro. That love is but a drop compared to the ocean of the mother's love. The mother will eat all of you and never spit you out. Huh? <laughs> uh, let's agree to disagree. <laughs> Oofa doofa. Is this guy just, uh into war. Is there a chance he's just worshipping at the Church of War? Uh... <laughs> hey, are these your shoes that I'm wearing? I think they were a long time ago. He looks at the red brogues you're wearing. I had to shed them, like skins, to get closer to the center of the silence. You can have them. I don't need them anymore. The shoes look pretty dabber, actually. <laughs> um... I still don't understand what you're doing in the church. I'm a seraph, seraph Holmes. I sing the mother's glory. Uh, you should sing for me, the superstar cop. I ain't from no Marietti, if that's what you're thinking. And the song I sing is silent as the mother. Marietti is a mesquite style of music and dance commonly seen in all manner of festivals, especially weddings. It's de delightfully quaint, owing to its peasant's origins. He lost his cool air for a moment. Seems like he hit a nerve. Uh, how did you even find this place? He says, hard to say. I think I did some construction work here back when I still had material worries. Up there, I realized that the true purpose of the church was... Been spending a lot of time here ever since. The past is nothing to me now, eh? It doesn't belong to me. Hmm. Right. Uh, no other questions. Oh, thanks for the... I, I don't know what they're called. Thanks for the cheer. <laughs> nope to joke. Um. You've been here a long time. Do you know why the church was abandoned? Police raid a while back. Oops. Uh. He responds, his voice suddenly flat. Kim says, did you witness it? He says, not really. At least I didn't remember much of it anymore. The mother's love has done its job. 
And what's so great about the mother? It lets you forget about everything. Fuck. Did you know where the other spooker is? Point to the strange machines around you. Other spooker? Oh, esa fajita muy estudiosa, he says. Don't know, Holmes. Vegeta is grandma? Wait, so there is another person living in the church and it's a uh, Vegeta? No, I just call her Vegeta because of her clothes. She's actually quite young. He scratches his head. Or maybe not that young. Age is just one of the many masks that we wear. And you don't know where she is? That's what I said, Holmes. How can you not know that when you both live here? Don't really follow her comings and goings. Just see her typing on her computer now and then. We've got different interests. <laughs> so you got nothing else to tell me? How she looks, what she does, who she is? I'm afraid not, Essay. You just have to wait until she comes back or... He shrugs. Or search through her radio computer. Hey, do you know the password? Surveys are a good way to fish for personal information, especially in the name of public safety. Thanks, Drama. Drama is encouraging me to catfish right now. Or I guess this isn't catfishing. What would this be called? I guess I'm just fishing. Fishing for information. Is it still called fishing for information when you're just asking somebody to give you the password of somebody? Uh, I'm doing a survey of passwords and passcodes identifying regional event trends. In the interest of public safety, of course. Don't sweat it, Vato. <laughs> the password is afterlife death. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, thank you. I think we're done here, Essay. The figure crawls off into the darkness above. Kim says that was an interesting conversation. However, I'm not sure how it's relevant to our investigation. Whew, boy. Gonna go ahead and save. Because that was all super wild. That was so weird. That dude, I guess, just lives... In the ceiling, a spider has spun its web around this wood-carved pillar. Yeah, I guess that dude just lives in the ceiling and survives off of the church energy. Hmm. A cracked pane of glass, colorful. He is a naked, yes, Nicholas, yeah. You're right, he's a naked construction worker who lives in the ceiling. And that's, that's just what it is. Frost has drawn flowers on the glass, obscuring the view. Let's go ahead and take that. Ooh, do we have more? Is this clothing? Is this a scarf? Yeah! A silk scarf. Let's go look at this scarf. So right now I've got a horrific, <laughs> a horrific necktie that gives me plus one inland empire. Oh, this scarf is so nice it increases my pain threshold. It does obscure my shirt, though, which is pretty tragic. Uh, hmm. Well, I mean, it's a pretty good look. I wonder if we can find the rest of his clothes. I, it is sadless. It is sad that we don't get to see our very cool shirt, though. Listen, the horrendous necktie is horrendous, and I do love it for being horrendous. I mean, do we like, I guess here's the question for the chat, do we like this uh, beautiful silk scarf, or do we like this horrible, horrible necktie? <laughs> Which is it, gang? Yeah, informal poll. I'm gonna keep playing. Chat, let me know which you think is best, and I will switch off. A drawn, a figure drawn on the frost in the window depicting a deer. Fucking weird game. Oh, strong love for, much more love for necktie than I was expecting. Okay. I'm into it. Plus then we get the, the little peak of, little hint of the scarf, or uh, the, of the shirt. Apologies, Kira Nieres. I think you've been outvoted. Uh, okay. Let's go ahead. I, I can't remember if I saved after talking to that guy, so I'm going to save again. Oofa doofa. Machine's keyboard is still illuminated. 
revealing viscerescent uh, play and print buttons. Speaker comes to life, static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. An old lady greets you, her voice sounds a hundred years old. Let's try this again. I think I might have the right password for the personal log. Good. Please repeat the password. After life death. Good. I've unlocked the filament. After ending the call, please press print, print to access the filament. Woo! Fortress acci accident, is there anything else I can do for you today? Fortress accident, like the one in the doomed commercial area? I have two machines registered to this company name in Martinez, one in St. Brune and the other in Rue de saint gilles <laughs> Welcome screams for memes. <laughs> That's good energy. That feels like accurate energy for what has been happening in this game today. Uh, cool. All right. Press off silent. I should be able to access the filament now. Can I? Wait, did I do it? I already clicked through all of that. Do I just have to hit print? Ah, oh, nope to joke. Thank you for the gift sub. Congratu congratulations, Shrek. I hope that's a Shrek reference. Or if it's not, I hope it's something else funny. Yeah, Quanta, I, I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you. It's been a weird, it's been an exceptionally weird everything. Just a, lots of, lots of stuff. It's right up there with the um, black hole in the shipping con container. That's how I feel about this episode. Okay. The printer prints out a long text document with dated paragraphs. It looks a bit like somebody's journal. Let's read this bad boy. Front first entry made on the 4th February 1951 uh, by an unknown author is short and concise. Arrived at the church, the door was boarded up, so I used a crowbar to get inside. Looks like the place has been deserted. Nothing out of the ordinary, but I'll ask around. Need to figure out how to get the electricity in. Kim leans closer, scouring the printout over your shoulder. Just as you finish reading, he looks up, muttering under his breath. 4th of February, that's over a month ago. Whoever set those machines has been here for quite a while. How do you think, do you think this log might be connected to the case? There's no way. Kim says, our case? No, I don't think so. It must be some local, his eyes wander to the various machines around him. Eccentric. Read the second entry. 6 Feb 51. Had a little chat with a local fisherman. Said I shouldn't go near the place that the church was spooky and ridden with narcotics. It's a little spooky, all right. Still haven't figured out the electricity. See, even one of the spookers themselves says it's unnerving. 5th Feb 51. Finally got the electricity in. Next on the agenda, a new antenna. I think Esker series? Something advanced. Why would she need an, an antenna? Kim says, why would anyone need any of this equipment here? He steps on a wire running on the ground, inspecting it with his boot. 4th entry. 8th Feb 51. Bought the antenna, had some problems setting it up, called Simo for help. Heard the others are back to making art, drinking around town somewhere. Sula started a Brock band. Le Lexi has been s asking money from strangers. But at least the artists have their act together. They're qualified labor. They can get work anywhere. Graphic design, ads. The programmers are doing fine, too. I mean, they're programmers. The writers, though, they're fucked. <laughs> Just have to find out what caused that data loss and be done with it. Still don't understand how it managed to wipe up the backup when the backup wasn't even connected to the front. I know, I know. Everyone thinks it's impossible. They say I must be lying. Lying. I'm here to set it right. Hmm. A data loss? Kim says, seems like something to do with radio computers. Unfortunately, I don't know enough about them to understand what the author is saying. Something about the backup data being destroyed and how everyone thought it was the author's fault. Let's just keep reading. So I know that that business in the doomed commercial center that we went to, that business went under. So I'm wondering if they lost, they just had a data loss, but it sounds like something else happened. Like maybe it was sabotage. Brought some food from the grocery store. Apparently there's a strike going on in the harbor. Definitely not happy to see the Martinez people again. Everything now set up in the church. Going to start working tomorrow, 8 a.m. The strike. 
Kim strokes his chin. We're nearing the date of the murder. Hmm. Keep reading. I'm interested now. I want to know what the what's the radio an anomaly that sent this person here in the first place. I'm glad Kim's on board because we were going to be reading it all anyway. 25th, February 51. I've been sending data here up to Lintel for a while now, trying to recreate the data loss, but nothing. Don't even feel like logging in the disappointment. But I did discover a curious audiospatial anomaly at the back of the church. I've named it the Swallow. It swallows sounds. Need to get some mics. Is she talking about? Kim asks, looking to his right towards the silence. Seventh entry. Yes, the first recording confirmed that the swallow is real and that I'm not just losing my mind. It's a pillar of silence with a diameter of approximately three meters. Seems like the higher I go, the less I record. That might be a coincidence, or it could be connected to the data loss that led me here. The pillar of silence, Kim says. She is talking about the silence. Is she suggesting it's more than just an architectural quirk? Hmm, but what could it be? The lieutenant doesn't answer. He follows your gaze, studying the basins. The water shines in them. No ripples. Eighth entry. Some kind of young disco men have appeared next to the church. <laughs> I've been trying to record the silence to find the epicenter, but now it turns out I've been capturing the future of dance music, one neo-disco song over and over again. Fortunately, the song is so monotonous, I was able to devise an algorithm to factor it out. The one day... The other day, one of the disco men came. Before I could even say hello, she got scared and left. Good. I don't want anyone distracting me from my work. Haha! <laughs> yeah, F in the chat for disco men. Please. Miss, Mr. Disco... Please. Mr. Disco men was my father. She must be describing Skell. The girl on the ice, Kim says? Sounds like her, yes. Ninth entry. I got a call from the repeater station. Someone has tried to access the radio computer in our old office at Martinez. That was me. Can't do anything about it. The storekeeper still doesn't want me to let me inside the building. Thinks I'm some part, a part of some kind of curse. How Martinez of her. That's me. I was the one who broke into that radio computer. Kim says, I knew it wasn't a good idea to meddle with that machine. No, no, it was a great idea. You're learning things. This is how you learn things about machines. 10th entry, a new 2mm aux cable, noodles, crackers, ping pong, energy drink, water, toothpaste, gum, and also some canned air. Your reading is interrupted by the sound of the church door opening. <gasps> Suna, the programmer, a strange woman, makes straight for the radio computer. <laughs> this is so awkward. Hi. Hello. Gosh, I regret not checking out that hole. Oh. Breaking into my radio computer, I see. She glares at you as she holds down the off button for several seconds. The machine reads. I do apologize for the intrusion, madame. We are with the RCM, you see. <laughs> Kim says, it's fine, we're cops. Um. Hmm. We're here on a side case representing certain music venue organizers. We're not breaking in. I'm pursuing a mysterious lead. <laughs> Uh, we're here on a side case representing certain music venue organizers. Well, you won't find any music venue organizers here. She barely looks up from the keyboard. You hear the machine whirl back to life. It is me and my computer, and it has been this way for weeks. Now, please give me some room. I need two seconds to see that you haven't destroyed anything. We should talk to her after she has rebooted the machine. Hmm. An autosave? Okay. I'm just gonna take a look through this weird hole while you finish doing computer stuff. Hmm. In white silver and apricot face faints, the young mother of humanism stands above you. A crack runs across her body. She is impossibly tall, oval-faced, and sad. A dark and radiant majesty. This is her innocence, Dolores Day. <laughs> Dolores Day, huh? Cradled in her arms are a pair of huge, or a pair of glowing lungs clearly visible from underneath her flo flowering dress. You should kneel. Um, kneel. Your knees touch the floor. The floorboards are hard and cool. There you kneel among the snowdrifts, diffuse light ha falling on your hands from beyond the glass. Look up. The woman looks down at you kneeling. She towers among her followers, architects, laymen, courtiers. There is a sat sad smile on her lips and a glint in her green blue eyes of what compassion remorse 
<laughs> Cinnamon shakes. <laughs> this church sir is holy. She acknowledges the passing of someone who is still alive. Hmm. It's remorse. At that useless word passes through your mind, the lieutenant draws an X-shaped cross from shoulder to shoulder. Do the same as you get up. Your fingertips touch your chest four times, then you rise from your knees into the apricot-colored light of the window. Above you, the woman still smiles, her distant smile, centered by the crack in the glass. Hmm. Ha 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 ha. Nicholas, 100%. Yeah, this lady got a big, the biggest rig. Biggest rig I've seen in a video game in a long time. Mm. Okay, I've got two checks. Uh, high encyclopedia and high visual calculus. Uh, I want to reconstruct the cracked glass first. Success! A jigsaw of broken shards falls into place in front of you, a ghostly reconstruction of the stained glass window. Before it was shattered, there was an old woman beneath the younger one, and a text, a leet motif, below them both. What shattered this mosaic? Unknown. Great. A motor carriage, a gunshot, someone falling into it, or maybe just hooligans looking for something to break. Who is the older woman? The Escutian on her throne says, Irene the Navigator. She is depicted as an old woman wearing thick rimmed eyeglasses, holding a golden Reichsapfel in one hand and a scepter in the other. This is the queen her innocence day advised. Advised Above, she herself is whole. <sighs> Thank you for the re-up subscribe, Tamu929. Small figures of wise men, common men, worshippers walk up the stairs to stand at her feet. Secret servicemen, theriers, stand in a row guarding her. It must have been taken years to produce this work in all its dizzying detail. What does the motto say? Bo below both women in luminous black letters, Après la vie, morte. Après la mort, la vie de nouveau. After life, death. After death, the new life. Then along the left side, Après le monde, le gris. Après le gris, le monde de nouveau. Uh, which is after the world, the gray. After the gray, the new world. Oh, the pale. Okay. Hmm. After life, death. After death, life again. After the world, the pale. After the pale, the world again. This is the great leaf motif of humanism, a summary of the effect of the discovery of the Isola, the Insulidian, on human thinking. A tremendous sea change akin to finding life after death. Lieutenant, these used to say, after life, death, after death life again kim nods after the world the pale after the pale the world again this exaltation is common in delorean sacralism in the early years it was even incorporated as the rcm slogan yeek <laughs> no more however why it was deemed subservient to use a strongly moralitarian related motto we've already suspected of bootlicking ha <laughs> This sentence was also seen as too feminine. It was a macho thing. So what's our motto now? Justice, union, prudence, and force. Ooh. Uh, I like the other one better. So do I, Kim says. Hmm. Uh, all right. Uh, how did I know this is the mother of humanism? Despite the damage you've done to yourself, the title appears lodged in your hippocampus. This is her innocence, Dolores Day. Her, the innocence of humanism, internationalism, and the welfare state. Perhaps the most famous human being ever to have lived. Uh, boy, uh, um, what else do I know about her? Many things. You know she was a woman of the court, the wife of an influential Marquise, Marquise, and... Eventually, the principal advisor to Irene Le Navigator, Queen of Surinese, modern day Sur Le Clef. Also, that she was gorgeous beyond beauty. Okay, what else? Was she smart? Terribly. Women of the court were expected to play both contact, bridge, and chess sufficiently well to provide, uh, to prove an interesting challenge to a man. A similar grasp in matter of philosophy, theology, and science was encouraged. She was, by all means, a kept woman. She made the most of her position in the Antedelorian court. <laughs> Anti-Delorean, okay. 
a court visited by the most prominent thinkers and artists of the day. In secret, she was uh, becoming the era's preeminent philosopher of the state, a scalpel, a piercing gaze. She was an almost preternaturally magnetic and intelligent individual. To her contemporaries, she appeared out of time, a messenger from the future of the species. We all fell in love with her head over heels. Even before she was declared an innocent, her influence was tremendous. It was her advisor that it was her it was on her advice that Irene the Navigator sponsored a number of voyages into the Pale, a costly, often tragic endeavor, ultimately vindicated by the discovery of the new new world, the piece of reality you're standing on. She was crowned two years after the first exp expedition returned, setting in motion what is widely considered the greatest era era in history, the Delorean era. What the fuck? Wow, indeed. When her innocence was declared and that queen she had advised for years fell on her knees before her, she was so overcome with emotion, emotion that her lungs started glowing in her chest. Bystanders reported gold filaments lighting the already sunlit chamber around her, clearly visible beneath her dress. What? What the fuck? That is why the lungs on the symbol of love are the symbol of love for the cultures of the Rael belt. What fucking wild. Uh, what exactly is an innocence? The highest category of historic individuals and embodiment of the world spirit. So I guess like uh, kind of equivalent to a saint? A ruler? More innocent? An innocence is elected to office by the founding party, a precedent that has taken place a mere six times in the entirety of history. The legal system of the Real Belt is built to accommodate innocentric rule should it coincide with our time. An innocent is infallible. The decision made by one are not decisions. They are inevitabilities. What would have happened anyway only accelerated, packed into decades instead of centuries. An innocence is a continuous, compressed event, a sacred human being. Uh, okay, so like a saint prophet, almost. It is an honor and a glory to live one when one is in office. Is one in office now? No, we are alone. Ooh, what? Okay. This is wild. Um, was there something terrifying about her? Terrifying is a term too emotionally charged for your semantic memory, or what remains of it. But, although she is often considered to be the greatest human being to ever live, there was something ominous about Dolores Delay. Do Dolores Day. Constantly surrounded by her theories, she was the most socially secluded and least self-aware of all the innocents. Some modern thinkers would consider her a war criminal for the campaigns she waged. Okay, this is... This is making more sense. Waged against the Mesquite State. And then there were the resettlement programs. The Mesquite State tried to detach itself from innocentric rule. Parts of the world were experiencing whiplash from accelerating into secularism. Her mandatory education programs and mass resettlement of upstream Magritte were problematic as well. Problematic is too gentle a term for what you're describing. War crimes is more accurate. Dissenters were supposed to were suppressed by a military force she called the Army of Humanity, suggesting those who fight against it were not a part of humanity. <sighs> she adored chess, yes, but also military war games. Dolores Day often holds a tiny tin soldier between her index finger and thumb in icons such as this. She was also blonde, the blondest woman you have ever seen, with green eyes the color of pismantic mar interregum. Little is known about her Marquis husband. It's as if he banished from history after completing his role, which was to introduce Dolores Day into the court. Uh, to conclude, yes, there is something lowly, paranoid, and even terrifying that people seldom mention, but feel when they think of her. This subtle terror is part of her iconography. Woof. Whiplash. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Lieutenant uh, Irfritur, you've stood there for five minutes, <laughs> for over five minutes, Lieutenant's calm voice echoes in the cold air. What are you thinking of, if I may ask? Um, <laughs> yell war criminal. War criminal! I hope my neighbors enjoyed yelling. I hope my enjoy uh, neighbors enjoyed that moment I just gave them. I don't know about that, he takes his glasses off to clean them. It was a different time, a different war. Either way, this church, the coast in general, we shouldn't linger here. This isn't a good place to get lost in. We should conclude our business and move on. Yeah. 
Phew. Hey, her innocence Dolores Day liked little figurines, right? L liked holding little men between her fingers, remember? What? You have that... Oh, fuck. That headless fallen, fallen writer figurine. You should give it to her. Win her back. Wait, when who back? I can't win her back. She's a long dead historical figure. Don't be so pessimistic. Love doesn't die that easily. Uh, I do want to know what this thought is. So I'm probably not going to actually develop it, but I want to know what it is. Oh, it's just, okay. Often figuring it's Dolores Day. So this very, very, very nifty. Nifty and mysterious. This is surely what the figurines are for. Uh... Can I... I don't know how to offer it. Looks like I can't give this figurine to her. Why? Because she's a stained glass window. <laughs> that does seem to be a problem. Maybe you meant something else? Like what? Is the task still on? I don't know. What are we thinking of? Part of your mind has gone on to other things already. <laughs> Game. <laughs> Game. The mother of humanism towers above you, a wax, wax painting on a cracked plane of glass. Nothing about her has changed. Nothing has changed in her expression. Sorry, I'm just trying to click through to figure out if I can or cannot do this. What? Game? Dolores is fond of figures. She deserves more. You should offer her any and all you have one day if you meet her in person. She's dead. What an ad odd task to give yourself, but here we are. Okay. She's dead, though. She dead and a war criminal, so I don't know what you want from me, game. Um, have you finished what you were what doing, Sam? The woman is still hunched over the keyboard, gently illuminated by the purring machine. Uh, hey, are you the lead programmer of We're All Untethered, by the chance? Yes. Or no, not anymore. That project is dead. She doesn't seem surprised to be recognized. Rather sad. Something passes over her face before she straightens her back. I didn't break anything, did I? No, you just printed out my personal lock and wasted some paper. It does not look like a big loss to her. So, who are you? What are you doing I am here? Sona Lukan and Kilde, the former lead programmer of Fortress Accident and RSA radios. I have over 16 years of programming experience, and I'm proficient in both Vox and Orbis languages. If you're not here to hire me, huh. I don't really know how can I help you. She turns back to the terminal. That still doesn't answer what she's doing in an abandoned church. Um, God, should I ask her about the man living up in the rafters? If she doesn't know about it, that's gotta be weird, right? No, I'll ask. No. <laughs> she says. But you know he's around? Yes. It sounds like you're not worried about him at all. No, you're right, I'm not. Her voice trails off as she pretend as she bends over to tinker with the machine's printer. Fair enough. What are you doing in an abandoned church? You really like those questions, don't you? There's a hint of amusement in her tired eyes. Uh you're occupying a public space. I need to know what you're doing here. I'm conducting scientific research here. You can't throw me out, she says, ready to stand her ground. What research? I'm looking for the location of a two millimeter hole in the world. Wait, what? <laughs> She's looking for a disruption in the radio waves. That's what her personal log said. The lieutenant raises his brows, but doesn't say anything. Is the hole connected to the data loss in your journal? The hole in the world, what does it mean exactly? Um, yeah, is the hole connected to the data loss in your journal? Yes, that's what led me here. She stares at the burnished antenna on a nearby table, but I suspect it might be something a little bit more complicated than that. What does a hole in the world mean exactly? Exactly, she says, what does it mean? There's something frantic about her as she locks her gaze upon you, eyes shining like pearls. Up to now, it's been impossible to say what it is, but because it's impossible to measure nothing. What do you think it is? What qualities does nothing have? How do you measure something that does not exist? She's suddenly absorbed in the conversation, waiting for your answer. 
That's a little above your pay grade at the moment. Uh, hold on a moment. Does it mean we're now living in a world that has holes in it? I don't know, are we? She says. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to figure out here. But how do I figure it out? Uh, I don't know. I'm just here for some science. Uh, I'm not here for some science. I just want to solve a murder so I can go home. That's not true at all. I've been fucking around so much and not at all solving this murder. You measure it by its surroundings, by that which does exist, she says, which is what I've been trying to do. I've tried using hydrotransducers to record the silence, to find out where it begins. Oh, hydrotransducers. So that's what those water basins are. Devices for recording sound through water. But honestly, it's not progressing very well, she says. Staring at her circles of basin, it looks like some ancient ritual. Uh, you said the research isn't going well. Why not? Because it's just trial and error, trying to locate the swallow, the exact point in space. But I don't have a... She stops mid-sentence. You know what? It would be really helpful if you could just stop talking and let me work. That's fair. That's fair, and I respect that. Um, how do you feel about music? What? She squints her eyes. I hate it. I bet she hasn't even heard it. Um... Have you even listened to it? Like, actually listened to it? Yeah, like all the time. My tent neighbors don't really ease up with their partying, do they? She pulls a face that looks absolutely scathing. Maybe I'd have to be on drugs to get it. But to a sober mind, it just sounds like uninspired rug whipping. No, no idea what it has to do with either dancing or music. Right, right, but how do you feel about a club for anodic dance music? This is about those fee speed freaks in the tent, isn't it? I've got some news for you. It's not a nightclub they want to build here. Oh, you say? What is it then, Suna? Hmm... Uh, <laughs> maybe some community space to help the elderly? The lead programmer sighs. I can't believe they got you so easily. Go have another talk with those up-and-coming entrepreneurs, will you? Thanks. Good luck, Kim says. I'm not coming in there. Maybe I'd do better on my checks if you were there, Kim. Uh, alright. I'm gonna let you work in peace. Tell Andre about Sonia's thoughts on the nightclub. Um, good lord, okay. Is that everything in this church? What a fucking weird... Everything in here is super weird. So there's an interesting hum that happens in the game when I get close to where I suspect the, the Swallows is. Or the Swallow. What a name for something. Uh, I guess I can go back and talk to those ravers. I feel like I've done very little plot progression in this time. The time that we've been together today. I see you're here again, offside man. Did I mention getting us into the church would help? All right, one more go. Close. With a True, gun. hard, full, car, hardcore, hardcore to the mega, internally coherent, all core, all right, yeah. Please tell me what exactly you're doing. Gotta get the people going. I see. Yeah, request. I want everybody's close. <sighs> Hi again. Hey, ahead. So, uh, how are things going? Ooh, okay. I can retry this check. Hold on. All right. Maybe everything isn't quite as you've been told. Take a moment to analyze. Uh, headphones were sold. I'm going to ask him about the church first. About the church. I checked it out. And he tenses up. What happened? I talked to the shadow-clad being climbing the beams. A man living on the ceiling. Andre says, oh man, the crab man. You mean? You, the crab man, you mean? Who is he? What do you think? Uh, he gave me this odd lecture on alcoholism uh, before rambling on and on about mother's love. 
Huh, really? Andre says. Interesting. What's he doing in the church? Uh, just preaching and praying from the look of it. No matter, Noid says. Is he going to be a problem? Yeah, Noid is right. Let's get back to the point. What are we going to do about him? These guys will never catch him. You will never catch him. There's nothing you can do. Um... Uh, actually, he told me he wouldn't mind the nightclub at all. Andre says, I don't know, man. Doesn't it feel like a major hindrance to you? A spooky guy climbing around when all the guests are trying to have nice, friendly hyper time? You're just gonna have to live with the crap, man. Noid says, I guess it's not a massive problem now that I think of it. Everyone is welcome to dance till the morning light. Yeah, Egghead says. Maybe, uh, I guess we'll figure something out. Okay, what about the other spooker, the one in the grandma's clothes? Did you see her? Uh, actually, I want to talk about something else. I want to do this check. Okay, even chances, 42%. A logic check. I, we just gonna have to go for it. Maybe everything isn't quite as you've been told. Take a moment to analyze. Success. A number of things don't add up. Let's take a look. How about gather around, kids? Uh, okay, kids. Gather around. Noid, the young speed freak, puts down a busted capacitor and looks at you. Egghead, the one with a large head, seems very enthusiastic about whatever you have planned. Their would-be leader is less amused. Sometime in the past, I'm not sure when and where, but betrayal was evolved. I fell sick and became the shadow you see now. But before that, I have reason to believe I was a police detective. Andre says, but you still are. Uh... I was good enough at this job to be ranked the lieutenant, uh, the, to be awarded the rank of Lieutenant Yefritur. That could have been captain. Imagine that. Egghead says, what happens? He looks serious suddenly. Disco happened. Egghead says, I've been trying to say we need the next step in dance music to happen fast. Andre looks at his friend. Shut it. What? I have, I've said that, Egghead says. Now, obviously, that might as well have been a thousand years ago, but there's still some detective left in me. The young speed freak is silent. Hmm. This isn't the making of a club. It's a tent full of laboratory equipment for manufacturing drugs. <laughs> Andre says, I have no idea how you arrived at that conclusion, but it's wrong. Look, we even have speakers. He points to the speakers. One speaker. They have one speaker. Mm, you have no headphones. Wouldn't Asel need her headphones to spin tape? What do you know about spinning tape? Nothing. I know you pawned them, likely for lab equipment and drug ingredients. I'm sorry, but there's no lab equipment and no drug ingredients. Uh, that nose effect is here for its active ingredient. Noid said he said it was for his nose. What more do you want? Hmm. Like pseudo ephedrine, most exactly the shape of ephedrine. Ephedrine makes you happy, and so does pseudo ephedrine. The distilled water, a la cornerstone of a clean lab. Noid says all and of all cellular based life. What's your point, law bringer? The ether in the air. These will solve it. Good for getting acting agent out of a solution. Andre says, make up your mind. First it's sweat, then it's ether. He smiles nervously. Where is his friend? Did he lose his friend? Andre says, what do you mean, friend? The other speaker. You only have one. Andre says, it's a one speaker system. It's monodynamic. You wouldn't know the first thing about s sound reproduction and anodic music. Other speakers. <laughs> You may, this may be the brain damage talking, but you've definitely never heard of monodynamic or one speaker system. There's no reason for me to pile on anymore, is there? No shit, Andre says. He sounds tired. In short, you tried to use a police detective to set up a drug lab. That's, he waves his hand, come on, that's... Preposterous? I meant to say, not true. 
You're sober. Was it hard for you to keep sober for this meeting? We don't need drugs to be hardcore, Egg says. Shut the fuck up, Egg. Maybe not today, Egg, but you need drugs to get through the days when you're not expecting me. Noid says, climb down from the equestrian monument, cat man. Consciousness is new to the universe. We all have our ways to ease the shock. Bottom line is, I know. So what are we gonna do with you? What do you mean do, Andre says. There's resignation in his voice. He's almost ready to drop the act. It wouldn't take a lot of pushing. Hmm, we do this lawman style. You tell me what's really going on and we'll work from there. I can be lenient. I don't really care. I just want to crack this case. Do what you want and I'll do what I want. Uh, see, I think this is probably related to the case that, what's her name? Joyce wanted us to do, which I need to break for Joyce to talk to us. So tell me what's going on and we can work from there. What do you mean by lenient, Andre says. Uh, uh, we'll see. Now speak. He thinks for a moment, then opens his mouse, mouth, then opens his mouth, then closes it again, then finally raises his hands. Things are just way too hard for an entrepreneur in this city. It's not like we're not going to turn the church into the Wiggis Club in East Ravishol. Because we are, Eggshead says. We totally are. We're just going to turn it into a speed lab first. Uh, you know, to get our foot in the door, Noid says. And why did you need me? Like I told you, spooky assholes moved in while I was getting all the stuff together. A month ago, the place was empty, and now it's all spooked up. They're not really spooky, are they? No, man, they're spooky, all right. It's just that they would also probably call the police if we started cooking speed in there. Egghead says, but the sign was way off, too. I couldn't feel the love at all. Uh, sir, you promised to be lenient. Okay, I can ask for a bribe first, arrest them, evict them, can help them proceed with the club, or proceed with the lab and the club. Maybe this isn't related to the thing Joyce wanted us to look into. I mean, she did explicitly mention that it was a drug lab and somebody was getting the ingredients from somewhere. But this must, this might be unrelated. Okay. Well, definitely gonna ask for a bribe. Come on, man, he looks surprised. Really? Noid, the young man doesn't move. His earrings rattle from the tension. With a, his jaw clenched, he says, no fucking way. Yes, fucking way, Andre says. The would-be leader points at his friend. His finger shakes in the air. 21 real, not bad. Well, out of word, the other speed freak pulls a red wallet out of the toolbox and hands it to you. The disdain is palpable. His eyes pierce you like lightning as he lets go of the wallet. I feel like I am blowing my chances to get in good with these party boys. But that's fine, because I want to support drug trade. I'm not going to do that. Uh, ask for another bribe. No. Um, I also don't want to kick Suna out of the club, or out of the church. A, a club that has a weird silent place is kind of cool but it seems like a terrible place for a music club. Uh, God, I really don't know if I want to arrest them or evict them or help them with the club. I definitely don't want to help them cook speed. Yeah, that's the thing is like, I love the idea of going to a club where there's just a little pocket where you can just stand and like be silent that does sound pretty cool but I want to kick Suna out so uh, I think I'm just gonna oh. see I guess the thing is I don't really think I really don't think that they are gonna set a club because they did sell their headphones Hypothetically, they could buy him back, I guess, but I really don't think these guys are actually gonna start a club. I think I'm just gonna evict them. Um, oh yeah, I guess, could I? I have to do something here. Mm, I mean, I can't imagine Suna would be able to keep up with her research if there were people in there doing club stuff. 
I think I'm just gonna evict him. Why is this so hard? And can I save? I can't. I can't save mid-conversation. All right, I'm gonna evict him. Get lost. I don't wanna see you again. No, please, Egghead says. He presses stop on the tape player. In the silence, you can hear the wind howl outside. There needs to be a club for anodic music out there. Everyone hates each other. Everyone hates it here. It's all just drugs and we're slaves and I can't. We're running out of time. Without a smile, Egghead looks heartbroken and older than you thought he was. He looks almost as old as you. We need a win. I promise this will be a win. We won't cook speed in there. We'll do it clean. We'll do it true. We'll do it sober and real and beautiful. This will be a victory for the light. This will be nothing. You can hear the ice cracking underneath you. Outside on the pier, the last century development crumbles in the wind, a grape shot row of falling houses. And so does Rue St. Jerome and Main Street. The old cinema is sinking beneath Villa Lobos. Uh, wait, does anyone feel that? What? Mm. Uh. Oh, Pixel Art Dragons, you're right. She did say there was a way to filter them out. Man, that speech was beautiful. All right, you changed my mind. But what am I actually gonna do? Uh, all right. You guys can do the club, but if you, if you guys are cooking drugs in there, I'm gonna be fucking furious with you. Yeah, Egghead says. The young man's smile widens to inhuman proportions. His teeth beam in the floodlight. I knew it, Andre says. The would-be leader drops his spiked head between his knees. It's impossible now. No, Andre, it's harder now. This hard cop has come to show us how much it, the fish is, and the fish is always so much more. What? We all know there was never gonna be a club for a node music with the speed lab. Now it has a fighting chance. What was that about a fish? There needs to be a club with a knot of music out there. Needs to. So we won't cook speed in there. We'll do it clean and we'll do it true. We'll do it sober and real and beautiful. Right, let's call this incident crime prevention. But I've got my eye on you. Andre says, okay, we'll try to do it without the drugs. He raises his head from between his knees. We'll do it straight up club in there. Spinning the maddest reels and nothing but. I swear to God. Okay, Egg? From here on, it'll be straight all the way. Okay. Goodbye. <laughs> okay. Good. I guess we did it. I want to talk to Egghead one last time for sure. We close. True. Hard. Full. Car. Hardcore. Hardcore to the mega. Internally coherent. All core. All right. Yeah. Curls his brow as his very large head traces the sublime movement of music in the very real air. Hardcore. The question is, what is but there was uh, Egghead, how do I solve hard, you? Hard, 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 internally co all core. All right. Hard core. Is it though? He stops in his dead in his tracks, tilting his head to the side. I was just thinking that a moment one ago. One mind, one spirit. There's no other world. There's no other life. <laughs> Egghead should have a voice. <laughs> I agree. Egghead, how do I, how do I break into that heart? True, okay. hard, full, car. One last time with Egghead. Hardcore, hardcore to the internally cohe- All core, all right. Hardcore, ah! Is it though? One mind. No, oh, that's the one I just did. True, hardcore, hardcore, internally, all core, all right. Why? Is it though? But is it? I mean, really? He tilts his head to the other side like an owl. The question is, what is the no, question? No, <gasps> it, it isn't. I solved it. Did I? What just happened? Okay. I asked the question is, what is the question? No, but seriously, I'm a bit worried it isn't. He frowns and starts bobbing his head back and forth once more. Haha, <laughs> a tough egg to crack, yeah. A tough egg head to crack. The skin on your back 
of the skin on your back is crawling. For a second, you can't even hear the music anymore. Yeah, I literally, yes. I <laughs> literally tried every possible path at first. How annoying. I uh, hope that wasn't too frustrating to watch. The skin on your back is okay. There is a hawthorn tree on Rue de saint gilles right next to the canal. Don't be alarmed. Everything is okay. He isn't actually worried. Everything is still super hardcore. What he probably means is it could be even more so. Uh, oh, the lungs on his belt buckle is probably because of the, the, the church, Dolores Day. Uh, you said you were worried. What do you think is wrong with the music? There's nothing wrong with it. I'm still in love with the hardcore. He turns pensive all of a sudden. Sometimes I just feel like anodic music is in its infancy, you know? For example, take this Arno van Eyck jam I've been pumping out the last month, and we'll continue pumping for the rest of 51. Isn't something holding it back from being hyper? He thinks for a moment, then his expression clears. It's like it's only ultra. It's, I think it's super hardcore, but you're right. It's not hyper hardcore. If anything, it sounds a bit proto, like it's not fully formed yet. You might be a moribund alcoholic and a failed cop, but you're pretty certain a thing cannot be both proto and hardcore. Huh. Hmm. It's proto, not hardcore at all. Whoa, culture cop, Egghead says. I think you might be right, but how could it become hardcore then? No, I know in my heart, but cannot think it in my head. If this is not hardcore, how could anything be? Uh... Try to think of something, if anything could make it hardcore. Harder core. <laughs> Try to think if anything can make it harder core. What? He looks at you with customary amazement. Guys, there's something happening in his head. Think even harder. Oh yeah, he's doing it. But you're not. <laughs> this is almost certainly a matter that suppresses, surpasses the limits of reason. My imagination fails me. I know, so does mine. He laughs and shakes his head. Um... This sounds suspiciously like a question. I thought the question was the only que- Wait, I thought the question was, what is the question? No, this is the answer. Wait, I just remembered something. I'm the police. Uh-huh, the young man is bursting with anticipation. Uh, actually, that's more likely to hinder us. Oh, he sounds so disappointed. I can't help with this right now. I need something else. Something extra. Ooh. Physical instrument challenging. Maybe your body can tell you what Arno Van Eyck's jam is missing to make it harder core. Uh, okay. Expert and, uh, I'm, a, I'm an expert in anodic music, apparently. All right, um, let's do it. Big money. Yes, okay. You know it in your lungs where the pressure should vibrate, in your heart that's alone, and in your solar plexus where the hits should land. So does every corded animal. Needs more base. Yes, it needs more base. Egghead, we did it, we solved it. What? The young man makes a sudden move like he's about to turn the volume down, but that would be ridiculous. And a melody, a good, mm, I'm just turning this into music, huh? A good melody is what makes a song really stick, so that you can't get it out of your head anymore, points to his head. Wow, okay, Egghead says. We should start with a melody, but where would we get that stuff from? Um, I don't know, I was thinking you would know? I'm sorry, I don't know anything about anodic music. I'm just a party boy. <laughs> I get the people going and say it's hardcore. Huh. God, okay, so I have to take on this task, huh? Okay, I'll look into it in an official capacity as a cop? No. All right, I'll see if I can come up with something on my own. A citizen investigation. Make Van Eyck's jam harder core. The young man falls silent with appreciation. He even tries to contain a smile as if it could hinder your investigation. Andre says, basically what you need to find here is a tape with some banging music on it so that Egghead could use it to remix Van Eyck's jam. 
Noid says, yeah, maybe that street hawker across the pawn shop has some tapes to sell? That's just an idea. <gasps> maybe I can get some tapes to do karaoke with. There's a hawthorn tree on Rue de Saint-Gelais right next to the canal. A reel of magnetic tape is caught in its branches like bronze ribbons blowing in the wind. It feels cold. Does it? Ma Egghead says. He looks around, looking for the cold. Rue de Saint-Gelais. I've been there. Oh, I know. I know this. I can tell you where it is, Egghead says. St. G is the boulevard, bef boulevard before the canal bridge. The one that takes you to the Whirling and Rags and the Industrial Harbor. It's got the lanterns and the... I knew that, Egghead says. I could have said that. And the mosaic sidewalk. It's all blocked, uh, blocked with a stupid traffic jam right now. Anyway, shake it off. Anyway, that's all yours to figure out, cop man. Cop man! Yells Egghead. <laughs> um, do tell me about the lungs on your belt, man. Lungs are for love! Why would lungs be for love? Oh, I already knew this. Um, it's because of Dolores Day. Do you have anything interesting to say to me? Bourgeois love from a bourgeois god queen towards a world getting rapidly more bourgeois. That's lungs for you. Ah, I just got an achievement. Biggest communist builder. <laughs> objectively, Noid says objectively, it was good for its time. And they sort of screwed it up after she passed, like they always do. Don't listen to that retrograde class warrior, Egg. All right, goodbye, Egg. All right, Egghead says, here comes the night. Phew. Okay. Let me go ahead and save. I hope this let I hope this ba it, the tape has a banging track on it, and I hope it lets me do karaoke. Uh. All right. I'm gonna, here's what we're gonna do, because it's getting late, and I'm hungry. Let's go run. Oh my god, is it raining? Shit. Fuck. Wait, do I have a raincoat? Hey, AJ! Yeah, I've got a raincoat. Should I put my raincoat on? It's raining. <laughs> okay, it's raining, so obviously I have to put my raincoat on. Uh, before we stop, I am gonna run to that street and find, uh, that tape. Because I want to know, because I still haven't found a tape that I can use to do karaoke with. And it's outrageous. It's all I want to do is have some fun and sing karaoke. So the sun comes up and I have to pay my rent again. Quick recap, I have not done much. So I talked to the boys in the tent. Uh, they said they wanted to start a music club, but they actually wanted to cook meth. And so uh, I used my power of persuasion to convince them to not do that. So they're gonna start their music club. Uh, and then I went into the church where they wanted to set up the club and a shadow man from the ceiling crawled down and told me I was an alcoholic. Uh, and he was right. Ooh, great news. The boat is big enough for a grown man like you to fit in underneath in a supine position. Wait, what would I be doing under there? I don't know, sleeping? What do people do under boats? This is merely a measurement from your visual, visual cortex. Do with it what you want. Great news, I found somewhere new to sleep. Kim says, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh no uh oh am I about to become hobo cop the church is super cool and freaky and we will almost certainly be going back there at some point but it is worth watching because it's wild um I said Kim great news I found somewhere to sleep under this boat it will be free Kim says, sarcastic self-pity is not what we need at this moment, officer. I understand the situation looks grim, but we must continue with our investigation. You have a home somewhere. All cops do. When this is done, you can return. Okay, you say that, Kim. We'll see. Alright, so now... A creaking ahead. A broken, broken axle grinding. 
Uh, I'm gonna go back to the street and see if I can't find that tape. How do I get... Oh, here we go. Is this? Yeah, here it is. Here it is. No. Go back. There we go. No. Hey, sweetie. Tequila, get back on track. Can I not get to there from here? I have to go around? Ugh. Oh, I see. Okay. There's so much of this new area that I've not yet explored. But I want to see if I can find that tape. So it was across from the pawn shop, and this is the pawn shop, if I remember correctly. Oh, they said to talk to this dude. Talk to that dude because he might be selling some. And also I can check and maybe get this tape. The Hawthorne Tree on Rue saint -Gelaine. Uh, bronze colored tape of magnetic ribbons of magnetic tape are caught in its branches, fluttering in the breeze. Just like promised, you stood here for what seems like eons, guzzling the sticky fumes of lorries and carriages. <laughs> uh, I am going to pat the tree. Good Hawthorne. Patting the tree reveals a small sticker which has almost been worn to oblivion. It reads RCM Emergency Desk Number 802. Underneath a slogan, Mankind, be vigilant. You tree-hugging pansy, fuck off. Uh -huh. The bronze ribbon twists around and within the branches in an intricately natural pattern. But there's something. What do I see? There's a twisted logic in the mess. You see the end of the ribbon, the way it flows, how it twists and turns. It's all starting to make sense. It'll be easier to remove now. Okay. Tape releasing calculations checked. I think everybody should pat trees more often. A fun thing that my friend Paul and I like to do whenever we're together is go to places where they have trees and touch leaves a lot. Um, I, saying it out loud, I realize that that sounds weird. <laughs> but it's nice. To, uh, leaves have lots of different textures and you can touch them and get a nice texture boost. It's, it's fun and not weird. It's a fun and not weird thing to do. Let's do this check. Ooh! <laughs> Oops! Oops, I did a bad job. I shouldn't have done a bad job, but I did a bad job. Um, I failed. Like an immaculate labyrinth, the twisting tape, the meta m m magnetic tape twists and turns around the branches. Oh, I hurt my body too. What? I can try that again once I get more interface. Oh, I hurt. That hurt both my body and my brain. It's pretty weird. You there. Do you have any tapes? You have a speaker. Everything's still cool here, officer. Oh, that's right. I was able to buy those cool sneakers off this dude if I could also buy the speaker. I wonder if I bought that speaker and gave it to those boys. It would help their club. Hey, quick question. Do you sell any tapes? Hmm. I refuse to wear my horrible, the horrible yellow gloves. Absolutely not. I use those to open up a corpse, and I just can't wear them again. Tapes, you mean like music tapes? Nah, music is out. <laughs> Don't listen to music. I sell extremely cool sunglasses if you want to get your mojo going. Baby. He points to the shoddy box on his left. Um, so do you know where I could find some tapes? Tapes? The notion sounds preposterous to him. Tapes are everywhere. They're worthless, kids. Throw them in the trees. They're, there's in the bushes right behind the lorry. He nods at the empty lorry cabin behind his back. No one would ever throw a perfectly good pair of high quality plastic sunglasses in the bushes, mister. His smile widens. To the west, dark brown ribbons of tape hang. Yeah, I saw. Uh, all right. So you ain't got any tapes, but you do. Let's just check these shoes again. Reaction speed, hand-eye hand coordination, minus one encyclopedia. Mm. I mean, I have the money. I have the money, so why not? Super cool. Now the premium lifestyle is yours, officer. All right, and now I can buy the speakers. The junk is yours, officer. The st street vendor hands you the speakers. Happy listening. Cool. Uh, so that's almost certainly the speaker that those kids pawned. So maybe I can give them back to them. 
Let's see how these shoes look. Pretty boring. I don't know. What do we think about these shoes? And do I have anything that's going to improve my interface? Oh, only these horrible gloves. Yeah, this game has tried to get me to be a lot of different um, moral and political systems, but my only allegiance is to no pants. That's my statement, and I'm sticking with it. I mean, if I, if I put on the corpse gloves, will that allow me to do redo this check immediately? Ugh. Ugh. It's just that I know... I know they, they're covered in corpse good. Oh, maybe this, maybe these speakers don't match the ones that the speedheads were using. That's fine. Okay. Put on the corpse gloves. Oh, yuck, yuck, yuck. Ah, uh, it does nothing because it wasn't an actual increase in my stat. Ah, uh, I put them on for nothing. So gross. Okay, well, how close am I to getting another? Oh, I'm so, I'm like one check away. Oh, one check away from getting... Well... Well, that's a shame. You know what? That yeah, that's just a shame. Can't do it now. We'll just have to remember that I can do it later. Uh, let me go ahead and save. And that'll be the end of the stream. God, so sad we couldn't get that. So sad we couldn't get that tape down. I'm going to brainstorm about I mean, we just have to do like one more check and then we'll get an points for another level and then we can use that level to increase our interface and then we can use that skill to get the tape down, and then maybe we can sing karaoke. That's the goal for the stream for next week. Um, so should be back. Uh, I don't think I have anything planned for next Saturday, so it should be at 2 o'clock once again. Um, so uh, once again, thank you for coming out. Hope you enjoyed the stream. I'll see you all Wednesday uh, for Blender stream, if you all come to that, and next Saturday if you come back for this one. Otherwise, I'll see you all later. Have a good rest of your weekend.